Hello motorbike fans, this is Martin and I got some motorbike stuff for you. And it is touring time! Yippee! I'm going to the German Westerwald for a tour of four days in total. And I hear you asking, where the heck is Westerwald? Well, if somebody in the studio can bring up a map, that'll be nice. Thank you. As you can see, it is roughly east of the cities of Bonn and Koblenz. And it's actually south of Sauerland. And Sauerland is where I am right now. And uh, maybe you wonder why? Well, I'll tell you. I could have gotten to the Westerwald by following the A3. It's pretty much a straight shot down from where I live. Down along Düsseldorf, Cologne and Bonn. And I come into the Westerwald. It would take about three hours or so, but that would be boring. So instead, I um, picked a route like this. And as you can see, that basically goes all the way east and then straight down through the Sauerland into Westerwald. I mean, why not? We're on a motorbike, so let's not take the straightforward motorways, but let's take the curvy roads instead. Currently, I'm on the road between Bad Belleburg and Siegen. And I've tried to find the, the curviest roads I can find there. So that's basically what we're looking at right now. While we are enjoying the views here in Sauerland, let me fill you in on some uh, details on the setup of this tour. In the past, I have used a specialized company in motorbike trips for short tours like this. It's like a three to four day weekender. And um, you've seen some of these on videos. Um, basically, they come in two different varieties. It's either an individual tour or a group tour. And a group tour means you go there individually or maybe with some mates. And then when you're there, you find other people, they're all doing the same tour as you. But you're not doing the tour with all those other two people. You're still doing it by yourself or with the mates you brought. Or maybe you made some new friends there amongst all the other people and you take them with you on your tour. The rest of the group you will meet in the morning at a breakfast uh, table and you will meet him in the evening at dinner and after dinner drinks of course. While it's uh, entirely possible to make some new friends on a tour like this like I've done, remember Jaco and Jan from previous tours, um, the rest of them usually stay pretty much strangers at least to me. So in that sense basically you are effectively touring with yourself or a few mates or maybe some new friends and then spending breakfast and dinner time with strangers. Not ideal in my world, but hey, it's also not a big problem. But um, it turns out that always a few of these strangers are a good bit on the vocal side, or as other people would probably call it, loud. They tell the biggest stories on their previous adventures, and they always make it sound like this time they're on the, the most boring tour they've ever had. That's probably not what they intend to, but that's sort of the impression I always get from that. I've done quite a few of these tours, and the faces always change, but the stories, they remain the same. And at this stage, motorbike fans, I've heard them all. So. Uh, last year I decided I had enough of that and tried to book an individual tour instead. That was pretty okay, this was the Odenwald Spessa tour, I don't know if that's um, on YouTube when you watch this, but do keep out for that one, it's really nice. Um, different kind of setup, it means that I spend most of my time either on a motorbike or all by myself in my hotel room or on the balcony of the hotel room I had a really nice lovely balcony there and I only come down to general rooms for breakfast and dinner of course uh, not meeting any other people um, I found it an improvement in many ways because it's a good bit more quiet I have more time to myself time to uh, have some thoughts let go of some thoughts you know usual things it's pretty good but still I find the hotel setup not entirely brilliant. Oh, motorbike fans, look at that big wall to the right. The road's being cut out of the mountains. Or even better, a concrete wall like that with anchors and all that to make sure that the mountain stays to the right and doesn't roll on the road. This always gives me the, the feeling of being properly abroad with real actual mountains and rough terrain and such. Fantastic. Ooh, nice little side road. Ooh. 
That's pretty steep. You probably can't see that, but that's a proper inclination. Oh, but well worth it. Look what's coming up here. Oh, this is some proper shower and beauty. And what a weather we got with it. Well, this is uh, almost like Tuscany, I think. You can see the road go up and it probably turns all the way to the left there where you see the trees. Well, let's see if I'm right, if it really goes there. I'll find out soon. No, oops, it turned to the right is that. Well, okay. Uh, but still, lovely, lovely views. So, on my longer tours, the one-week tours to the Alps and Luxembourg, um, I have a different way of going about it. I just book a nice place and I do everything else myself. My uh, cooking, my breakfast, my shopping, the whole lot. And I like that very much, so I thought, why not do a long weekend tour in exactly the same way? So that's what I've done. I've booked a lovely, lovely place, uh, a wooden hut somewhere in the backyard of a farm on Airbnb, or at least I think it's, it's lovely. We'll see about it when we get there, but the pictures look absolutely brilliant. Oops, I just passed a little village and now I'm being held up by uh, two tractors that appeared in front. One right in front of me is an Audi. And the one ahead of that one, I don't know what it is. Oh wait, both tractors are turning left. Ooh, that is really helpful. Lovely, lovely. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what an excellent view we've got here. This is a quarter of a road. Wow. So, on my touring setup, I stuck some routes for the day together myself by basically um, checking out the internet to see what water hotspots and I connect them by the curviest ways I could find. And uh, just one way to go there, that what I'm doing now, and another curvy way back. And I'll call that a tour. So, very eager to find out how that's going to work out. And uh, that'll be a few more miles and then I'm going to find out. Or at least what it's like for today and what my, uh, my place for tonight is going to be. So yeah, really looking forward to that. Just uh, an hour or so to go. Well, boys and girls, we are coming down to the town of Ziegen, and that means we've reached the end of Sauerland. So I'll see you again when we enter Westerwald. Hello again, I've actually reached Westerwald now, just leaving the joyful city of Freudenberg, and doing the last few miles of this stretch to my little hut. It's said to be a very curvy, windy road, so let's see. Well, that's looking good. Well, pretty nice. Let me see what other updates do I have for you. Temperature is currently about 26 degrees. Um, that's something I should mention. It was very hot today. It was over 20 degrees when I left in the morning and it was actually 31 before the clock hit 10.30. And right there and then I hit a traffic jam on the motorway in the German Ruhrgebiet. So that was uh, really big fun. Sweating bullets in my motorbike gear. It's been 30 pretty much all the way while I was getting out of the Ruhrgebiet. Uh, the only good thing is you can do 120 there so you got some wind still uh, pretty unpleasant. Good news is, as soon as I got a bit higher up in the mountains, the temperature dropped a bit to 26, 27. And that's still what I'm getting here. And here we're getting 
to the top of this place with quite a nice view, left and right. Now it's looking quite promising. And the road is very curvy indeed. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the road is in uh, pretty poor condition, so I can't really do it as fast as I would want to with all the luggage I have on my GS. Being a bit careful here. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's pretty rough. But otherwise, very enjoyable. Yeah, coming down the mountain again and again, getting lower. I guess we're getting pretty close to, uh, to where I'm going to be. Yeah, here it is, Vliesenhagen. My little hut should be somewhere here, and I should be looking for a left turn somewhere. Sat nav will give me a shout when it pops up. A lot of these typical German wooden framework houses. Oh, stay there. Found that left turn. Was a little bit confusing, but this is the road I'm looking for. Haldenhof to the right, that's the name of the place where I want to be. Yeah, that looks like the place where I'm supposed to get my key. So that's good. Let's park up here and see what's what. Well, motorbike fans, I found it. So let me show around my um, humble abode for the night. There's a bit of garden here. That looks plenty, uh, plenty idyllic, don't you think? I have a choice of sitting areas. Oh, somebody left my gloves here. Bad habit. And yet another sitting area. So outside, we're absolutely covered. Now, let's go in. Guess what? There is a small bathroom with shower and sink and all that. They even thought of a toilet. Very, very handy. Very cozy living room, if you ask me. With a bit of a view of my outside sitting area. And even more view of the surroundings. Excellent. I guess this is my dining area. Not sure if that's going to happen because that looks perfectly okay for dining. And that's probably even better. Stove. Don't think I'm going to need that. 28 degrees. And then a very convenient kitchen with a lot of mod cons. Storage space, coffee maker. And then, last but not least, the place for sweet dreams. All right. Well, so that's my place for the next three nights. Um, I'm really curious to see what that's going to be like. It looks absolutely fantastic. Really chuffed for that. So uh, I'm going to enjoy this and I'm going to uh, get out of this hot stuff. It's really ridiculously hot and I should really get out of this. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and may the road rise to meet you.